this is the best. I honestly think this wheel and tire combination for most overlanders is probably going to be the best setup you could ever think of. Hey guys, welcome back to Sandy Cats. I got a lot of changes going on today, as you guys can see. We are we're gonna run some different beadlock combinations, um, and I'm also having issues with my Coopers, switching to Toyos. We're gonna get into all those discussions now. So the first thing we'll talk about is the beadlocks. I've been running beadlocks on my rigs forever. This is off my Jeep. This is a 40 on a trail ready beadlock. And when I got my fifth gen 4 runner, I put a non beadlock wheel on. And I went out to the desert and I was just kind of bombing it through a desert at like 16, 18 PSI. And I constantly get sand in between the lip and the tire. And it happened like, I don't know, at least three times. And it gave me slow leaks. And at that point I realized I still want a beadlock. And plus I like to air down to like 6 to 8 PSI on rocks, so beadlocks are for me. This was over 5 years ago I believe, and <clears throat> at the time this black rhino, I believe it's called the Prim, was the lightest beadlock I could find on the market, and that's the only reason I went with it. Not because of looks, because of weight. I, weight is extremely important on your tires and wheels. That's where the most amount of stress comes in to play, and that's where gas mileage comes in, drivability comes in a lot. So the lighter you can make your tires and wheels, the better you are. I went solely with this because of weight. Um, I believe they're discontinuing this, um, or they plan to, I don't know, but it looks like a Black Rhino got rid of a lot of their beadlocks on their website, so that's what's going on. <clears throat> because of various circumstances, which we'll discuss in this video, I decided to run three sets of tires. And that made me say, okay, let me try three different sets of beadlocks. So I'm going to be running this still on one set of tires and I really want to try the methods for their beat grip technology and just because everybody runs them, I really wanted the methods. And then this company is brand new, I think it's called yeah, HDR um, and these, I, I want I to, I just want to give it a shot, right? So I ended up getting three sets to compare the differences and here's kind of what I'll tell you. So first I'll start with these. Um, this wasn't my favorite set of beadlocks, but they worked just fine, to be honest with you. I really was excited by the methods because, you know, they're super hyped up. Um, and when I got them and put them side by side, I mean, like, I don't know, they kind of feel pretty similar to me, to be honest with you. The only thing I do like about Method is they do offer a lot of aftermarket accessories for it, like, you know, a spacer here, um, the hub caps are easy to, like, the, the center caps are easy to purchase. You know, things are easy to get aftermarket support with online. That's what I like about Method a lot. What I can say is Method really sells this beat grip technology. And I could see it here, and I, I understand how it would function. Black Rhino doesn't have any bead lip, te bead lip technology, but it has this lip here. And when I was at the tire shop just now removing the Cooper STTs from it, the guy could barely remove the tires from this lip. So, I mean, even though this isn't bead grip technology or whatever, it still functioned pretty damn well, like very confident. On these rims, you know, everything kind of feels pretty similar as far as, I don't know, everything, as far as a beadlock wheel. Um, but this has some kind of metal etching here. And my hunch is it's gonna be something in between these two, right? This is gonna be the biggest bead grip technology. This has no bead grip technology or whatever, or like etching at all, and it's still held really well. This has a lip and it has etching. So I think this will work pretty damn well. I mean, good enough for me. I never had an issue with this guy either, honestly. Um, <sighs> however, I weighed all three of these. This is forged. These two are not forged. Um, and they're all within the same price range, which is amazing to me. And this thing weighs about 10 pounds, almost 10 pounds. I'll give you the exact specs in a second. This thing weighs almost 10 pounds lighter than these two. And that's what kind of like, I was like, oh my God, because weight, right? So I do have a little bit of regret of not getting two sets of these, um, but it is what it is. But yeah, this is gonna be the lightest one. It's forged, so theoretically it's stronger and it's within the same price range. So this is the one I'm liking the best right now. 
Once I mount them, once I deal with mounting them, because beadlocks are a pain to mount, I'll give you guys more info. Um, this guy is here only because I have another beadlock lying around. And this is a trail ready. This is on my Jeep. It's, you know, a beater beadlock in essence. And the one thing I don't like, and I do recommend looking for this in the future, is the bolts. You want the bolts to be inset. They're not inset here, so I'm gonna be breaking these heads once in a while. It's part of the deal. Everything here on all three of these is inset, not an issue. The other thing you wanna look for is how far the valve stem is away from the lip because you don't want it to stick out past the lip or it's a rock obstacle. Black rhinos, I never had an issue. These guys seem to be pretty kind of closer than the black rhinos at least. Um, substantially closer and I'm kind of, I'm not, I don't wanna say I'm worried about it, but I'm gonna say that, you know, it's a little bit easier to break this valve stem than this. And this guy and this guy seem to be about the same width apart. So these two I have zero issues with where the valve stems are. This one I feel like it's a little bit too close to the outer edge and I prefer for it to be a little bit more inset. First thing I'll say um, is I use these little Autel TPMS sensors. They're not the cheapest, but they're so easy to program. So especially if you're going through a bunch of tires and switching out rims and whatever, for me, this is the easiest. And then if I switch my front to my rears, it takes me two seconds to reprogram these things. So I love these Autel MX sensors. I've already mounted two bead locks and with these methods and the Toyos, I think it's a combination of both. This has been the easiest bead lock ever that I've ever mounted, and I'll tell you why. First of all, the lip, it just falls right in. I've never had a combination that felt in as easy as this, even with 35s, and these are 37s. 37s are usually supposed to be harder, and this is mounting so easy. There's really no work. Usually I'm sitting with a hammer and I'm trying to ba bang things in. And all I need to do is just a slight adjustment right here. Actually, I don't even need to do adjustments. It just falls right in. So I will say with the black rhinos, one negative about the black rhinos that I now realize is this lip um, where the, you know, the bead kind of goes, the ring goes, it's, I measured it, it's about 1.5 to 2 millimeters wider. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but you know, I really see it's a big deal. That's really the difference between spending an extra 20 minutes trying to bang your tire in versus just throwing it in and it's in. It's insane. So that's awesome. That's amazing with these methods. So the other reason, I'm not gonna go into how I do my beads. I will tell you actually, I just don't wanna spend a five minute video on it. Um, I'll go like every four or five, every five I guess holes. I'll tighten this, tighten this, uh, just by hand go in a cross pattern over here, just using these guys. And I'll tighten everything down to where I seal the slit lip as much as I could. Uh, probably like six, seven pounds of torque. Then I'll put all my other bolts in um, and I'll just do it in a circle, not a big deal, to about four pounds of torque. Then I'll start a start pattern, starting with seven pounds of torque, 15 pounds of torque, and on this rim, I'm ending with about 24.5 pounds of torque, everything in a start pattern. Once I'm done with my start patterns, I'll go in a circle twice with 24 pounds of torque, and you'll see like things tend to loosen up a little bit until you do a second circle. So that's kind of the process. It's long, I'm not gonna show it to you. What I'm trying to really show you is how easy this install is, because this hole, on this ring is so big and it's, you know, it makes the socket not be an issue. Install my black rhinos, it's a pain because you're, half the time you're trying to not chip the powder off the ring and you end up chipping it anyways. And that makes you work much slower and much more cautiously. With this ring, I don't have to think about it. So I'm, I'm doing this so easy. Um, I'm finding that installing this beadlock versus a black rhino. Each one of these takes me about 15 minutes to install. On a black rhino, it takes me like 45 minutes to an hour each to install. Humongous difference. Already definitely worth, you know, I don't, know, I don't even know if these are more expensive, but definitely worth the cost. This ring is a little more expensive. Definitely worth the investment. So now let's talk about tires really fast. I've always recommended Coopers, and I kind of will continue to do so for specifically IFS rigs. Um, for solid axles, I've always recommended Toyos, but Coopers are always lighter. 
for what you get, the same quality of tire that you get as a Toyo, Coopers are on average like 10 pounds lighter and weight to me was more important. They lose on longevity because you burn through them faster, but to me weight is what I really cared about. And I have Coopers on my other rigs, 34s and 35s, zero issues. And when I was shopping for this foreigner, since I wasn't worried about weight, honestly, because of the Marlin RCLT kit, I actually at the time was looking for Toyos, specifically the Toyo Open Country MT, but they were all sold out. So I went with the Cooper STT Pro, which is a great tire. And I had that mounted on my Black Rano. And I spent at least 50 hours dealing with headaches and I was never able to balance them. I was never able to go above 73 miles an hour because of balancing issues. Um, so that's what happened. Plus, on top of that, <clears throat> these things are pretty loud. And in the end, this is an Overlander, mostly, and a rock crawler a little bit. So I ran the Coopers on the Rubicon, performed great. But I ended up getting some Toyos. And specifically, I got the Toyo RT Trails. This is the first Toyo that I've seen that I could compare to like a Cooper Discoverer, Discovery or whatever. The, you know, hardcore ATs that I run on my other foreigners because it's lightweight. So this RT Trail is now, is a lighter option. Therefore it compares to, at least for me, with a Cooper. So I was super excited to get them. Again, this is an Overlander. That Toyo, the RT, seems to be made for highway driving, for anything, for rocks, for mostly a lot of off-road stuff, it's just not a dedicated off-road tire. So I was super excited to get that on my rig because I want a little bit of the drivability back. I know you must think I'm crazy, and I probably am. But taking off this much on the sides, got this to fit just like my Toyos fit on the Methods and the HDR bead locks. Doing all this, I learned a lot. Um, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't able to balance my Black Rhinos and my Coopers, but luckily having three sets of rims that I'm working with at the same time and two different type of tires, I kind of understood why. A, the Coopers have a thicker lip and the lip kind of, I don't know, goes like, like this a little bit. And the fact that it goes like this makes it so it doesn't fit perfectly on the inner part of the beadlock. The Toyos fit perfectly, um, but there's also another reason for it. it. First, their lip is thinner and it doesn't have, it goes straight up and down versus going like at an angle a little bit. And that's why we had to cut off that angle basically. Second of all, the black rhinos, and I wish I had this on video, but I took measurements when I had all the wheels off the rims. And the black rhinos, it was about 1.5 millimeters wider, the inner bead, than the um, HDRs and the methods. So the width of this, in addition to the thickness of the Cooper, that's really what causes the issue here. All right, so here is the methods mounted on the Toyo RT trails. This is the 37 inches. Mounting was super easy. Methods were easy to mount, the easiest ones out of all of them. Toyos were super easy to mount. The lip was perfect, everything was easy. I've been driving on these 37s for a little bit now and the driving is day and night from these Coopers. I mean, it's a mud terrain, let's start there. Um, so when you get a mud terrain, you know what you're getting into. It's going to be worse driving, but not as bad as I expected, to be honest with you. Um, and a lot of it is tracking the way a mud terrain tracks. So, um, these things, when I, when I went from these Coopers to these Toyos, I mean, I felt like I jumped back into like a Mercedes or something. I don't know. Just that's the vibe I got right away. The drivability was so good. Like my confidence went up like crazy. So I'm very happy with my decision um, to have this tire specifically as a daily driver versus the Toyo MT. So before I get into the Coopers on these methods, um, I forgot to mention balancing. There's literally two quarter ounce pieces over here, one quarter ounce over there and that's it. And I think the guy literally just put them on so he could build me because I think I saw zero zero on the machine. These things, all five tire rim sets 
required no weights to balance. Now let's get to the Coopers. Love the Coopers for rock crawling. These MTs, you know, they performed really well, but driving them on the highway sucked. I'm not getting rid of the setup. This is gonna be my dedicated hardcore rock crawling setup. I want MTs for rock crawling. I got the Coopers, so I'll use them. Um, the Black Rhino is already beat up and they function, so I'll use them too. This setup was not great driving. That's why I have this setup now. That Black Rhino, even though it was advertised, I think at 33 or 34 pounds, when I put on a scale, it was 40 pounds. When I put this guy on a scale, he was about 38 pounds. My other guy was 29. So, substantial weight differences. But they still look sick as rock crawlers, right? And that's what they're for. Now, I'm the guy with three tires. Never thought I'd be that guy. And here she is on 35s. This is the same Toyo RT Trail on both. I'm really happy with this tire so far. Super stoked with it, actually, honestly. Um, weight savings for the quality and capabilities. But this is on forged HDR wheels, which are 29 pounds, which is almost 10 pounds lighter than the Methods and over 10 pounds lighter than the Black Rhinos. <clears throat> this is my super light overlanding setup. Mounting was almost as easy as these guys, not even close to as hard as with the Black Rhinos. This lip is um, similar to the Method as far as width is concerned. The only difference is these holes in the method are a little bigger, so it's easier to put a socket in. Anybody that has bead locks knows that that's a concern sometimes because you go slower to try not to nick the paint. You experience that with these, not a big deal. Um, so why am I running this? 35s. She looks better on 37s. I get it. Because a lot of the long trips I do, like the Idaho BDR trail and the trails we plan on doing next year and the following year we plan on doing, you know, Alaska for months, um, we're doing on two rigs, and my wife is running a Toyota 4Runner on 34s, I'm running this, and we're rolling together. During those trips where I'm doing 5, 10, 15,000 miles in one trip, there's no point for me to be running 37s if I'm not doing anything that a Toyota on 34s can't do anyways. Therefore, I wanted something that is better for drivability and better for gas mileage. This is the best. I honestly think this wheel and tire combination for most overlanders is probably gonna be the best setup you could ever think of. Why? Tire can handle most stuff. Um, you know, if you're in heavy, heavy snow, maybe you want something a little bit different, but you want, you want to be light. This is a light tire. And the wheel for a beadlock is so light. A beadlock is, for me, a necessity due to capabilities, but this is so light. I mean, my combination here is, I think, 20 plus pounds lighter than my previous combinations on a match 35. So, you know, 35 inch, MT with a black rhino beadlock, I'd be 20 plus pounds heavier. On IFS, that is insane because everybody knows that the weak links on IFS are this, the tie rod, the rack, and so on. And the lighter you can make your tire and wheel combination, the less chances you have of breakage, carnage. The lighter you can make your combination, the better miles per gallon you get and the better drivability you get. There's so many perks to being light. Um, so I'm super stoked with this setup. This is a setup I would now recommend to anybody. And do I have any regrets about anything I did? So I'm happy with my rock crawling setup. I would love to be for this to be my rock crawling tire, uh, rim, just because it looks so nice, but those are already beat. I have them. I'm happy with the tires. You know, that I just wanted MTs for rock crawling. I'm happy with this 37 because I do plan on doing trips solo that are overlanding, um, but, and I want 37s on those trips, so I'm doing harder stuff, but not enough to justify dealing with MTs on the highway. Um, I love this rim, it looks beautiful. I feel like if I would have done everything again, I probably would have got two sets of HDRs instead of the method, only because saving weight. I just didn't know about this rim when I got this rim. So, generally, very, very happy with everything. Maybe I would have got silver bolts instead of black. I feel like it's too black over here, but you know, it is what it is. Thank you guys. Like and subscribe. I never say that, but I think I gotta start saying that because everybody says that.